I'm Joshua, and I'm an INTP, and first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for viewing this video and visiting my channel. This is my return. However, I am only able to operate under a limited capacity for this is the last day of my spring break, and I uh, will not be able to make videos with the same consistency and regularity that I had in the past, so long as the semester still continues. But seeing how I have taken care of most of the responsibilities I needed to take care of during spring break, I thought that I would go ahead and uh, initiate the video uh, series I am going to do on the 16 types. So this will be my first video on types, and the type I'm starting with would be my favorite type, and this video will be on INFPs. So, first off, I will say this, that INFPs are very complex creatures. And what I mean is that each individual type has a basis for experience, at least a perceptive mode at which they take into the world and feel as if, or at least um, act as if the world acts on them in a particular manner. And what I mean is this, there can be a dichotomy between the qualitative experience one has in the world and the, in what I say, the objective experience one has in the world. There are those types that really perceive, or at least have the perception that they perceive the world as objects first, and then derive meaning, and there are individuals who pr think that they perceive the world in term of meaning first and abstract objects from the meaning that they receive from the environment. There are very real, um, there, those aspects are true at different levels of analysis and physiological and cognitive neuroscientific senses that at certain levels of analyses be by way of the retina and the substrate of which it travels. The it's very interesting that the neurological pathway that the eye takes is mapped onto various aspects of the uh, brain insofar as that the substrate uh, branches off into the amygdala, it branches off to the spine, it branches off to various aspects of the body insofar as it has a role in orientating one to act and to receive information, but it's very real that the uh, eye recognizes patterns in a multitude of ways and that perception is a very complex thing insofar as that there are two different modes in which people approach the environment, one being objective and one being qualitative. The INFP, because they are introverted feeling types and they are extroverted in, in extroverted tuition, sits at the uh, dominance of their psychic constitution, per se, by way of the top two tiers of their uh, eight cognitive functional stack, is how I'm viewing the cognitive functional stacks. The two dominant directors of their value systems are one that, one that is ultimately concerned with impressionistic elements and one that is uh, ultimately concerned with associative elements, it is to say that the primary basis of their being is qualitative, or the primary being, the primary mode of their perception is one that is qualitative, and it is one that is concerned with uh, meeting first objects secondarily. And that is something that you will see mostly in all of the NFs, that it is meaning first in objects secondarily. But that is the first basis I would like to start at in describing the INFP's nature insofar as this, that introverted feeling is their dominant function. And I've made videos on introverted feeling uh, prior to this. But something that I am noticing more so now uh, post those videos is that all feeling is, Im is an embodied phenomenon. Is that feeling itself though it is a rational function, is one that is by way of the various systems that act as a substrata or the substratum 
of our physiolog or of our physical existence and the things that direct us per se in the environment as the environment acts on us. As we are experiencing things, we have the way that meaning is made manifest to us. And the way that meaning is made manifest to us, or I suppose one depending on one's view on the issue, the way that meaning is abstracted or taken from the environment, the way that those things happen are very really where our emotions emerge from and direct us, per se, that I that all NFs, but re, really INFPs, are uh, ethical moralists insofar as that they are having a breadth of uh, subjective experiences, and I mean subjective experiences in this way that there are multiple levels of being that one comes into the world as. That's a very much an existential idea that you come into the world, but there's multiple levels, and the phenomenologist Heidegger particularly had very interesting language to uh, describe this, and um, it's essentially you have the world, you have your uh, culture, and you have yourself, and the uh, INFP is very much um, taking in all of the layers of resolution that they exist in, and these uh, different structures and resolutions of meaning in respects to their uh, self is creating um, items, ex items of uh, existential property insofar as that they are either self-affirming or uh, self-negating. So the INFP is very much a existential phenomenologist in their being. They are concerned with what it means to exist insofar as how things are made manifest to them by way of the subject and how they ought to act in response to that. Now, that's very interesting when you look at their uh, cognitive functions because their um, extroverted mode of being is one that is associative. So they have to go out into the world and they have to look at things and take things in. That's very in that's very interesting, and why INFPs are um, interesting because they're mopey explorers. They trot around and they experience people and the world in a uh, very um, nuanced and uh, amorphous wave-like manner. Because of their dominant introverted feeling being a uh, real phenomenological thing. And I suppose I, it would make more sense for me to break this down first. And to say that the INFP, their, uh, meta, the meta aspect of their existence is that they experience meaning in the world. The meaning makes itself um, uh, emergent to them. And it either uh, affirms the self or disavows the self. And they are constantly trying to figure out how do I best approximate myself to that which is self-affirming or to that which is life-giving. And how do I distance myself or uh, what do I do in response to the things in the world that are essentially uh, self-negating or um, ultimately nihilistic. And it's nihilistic in the way that I'm using it. It's not to say that an INFP can't be a nihilist. But typically, you don't find that with INFPs. And typically, they won't say that it's not like they're coming from a healthy place when they say that there is no meaning to life. INFPs, by way of the root of their existence, are meaning-based individuals as they find the qualitative aspects of life to be uh, stronger in their perceptual landscape than anything else. They orientate themselves in the environment by way of meaning first and they extract, they ex abstract objects 
from the meaning. The meaning does not, the meaning precedes the object. The object does not precede the meaning for the INFP. And it is because of their dominant introverted feeling that they are like this. An introverted feeling as a function is something that is concerned with the primordial elements and the primordial constituencies of our existence as human beings. It is anthropomorphic in its uh, structure. And what I mean by anthropomorphic is that we are, in my vantage point, from how I see things, we are evolved things. And that there are base um, competing drives, per se, that structure what it means to be human. That are independent meaning factor generators in of themselves. For example, our uh, need for sex produces a whole another layer of meaning and how we are going to essentially orientate and appropriate ourselves to things in the environment uh, just by itself alone. Hunger is another thing. It's just that the, our structure as organisms has a very real landscape that generates a tremendous amount of meaning, and meaning is that thing that determines our set of actions and what our actions mean and what things mean when they are made manifest towards us. Can we bear the um, pain, the suffering, and the inevit inevitability and unavoid unavoidability of death in life? Essentially, meaning is the psychological substance that allows for us to continue to exist in spite of the very precarious and contentious elements that are to our existence. Meaning is essentially what makes us organisms, and that is, and it, the, what that is, is made manifest by a very real stratum of a collection of things that the INFP is so grossly aware of, and these are things, because they exist in the midbrain and the lower brain, that don't lend themselves to articulation. So it is that is primarily why it is hard for, I think, at least in my own speculation on the type, why it is hard for them to say all that it is that they feel, that they know, and they experience. Because feeling is a set of action potentials, and feeling is something that is made manifest uh, by way of existence. Because they are, they feel. It is analogous to cogito ergo sum, as I think, therefore I am. But because they feel things, they are. That is why INFPs are real, or are concerned with authenticity, and that everything in the world is real to them. Their experience is real to them. It's so interesting that you cannot um, talk to an INFP about something being fantastical and why the fantastical elements and uh, aspects of existence so far in our imagination are so visceral and palatable to them as individuals and they come wrought with such intensity because it is the realness of being that is at the very core of what they are and their very existence is asking the real ethical question and so far as what actions, what beliefs, and what structures constitutes life in existence, or in so far as brings life or gives life in existence, and what are those things that disavow it or lead away from it, and I will champion that which brings it, and I will villainize that which doesn't, which is why there's a very real moral compass in them, per se, and they can have a very stark and uh, real polarity and contrast between good and evil. The Essentially, the story of uh, existence will always be at the heart of them, and it will be what they're acting out, and it will be what they're concerned with. That differs. That's something that's... Um, a bit fundamental to all NFs, but shows up in a very specific way in INFPs, and where sort of the um, authenticity emerges because it is so innate to what they are, and they know that there is no other way that they exist, that that is, what they, that is all that they can display, and that is all that they can be. 
and that's primarily what they're communing with. And it's so interesting with extroverted intuition, insofar as this, is that it takes them out into the world. And they are these um, downtrodden, awe-inspiring um, phenomenologists, uh, mopey existentialists. That's the way I would, I would say that they are. Um, because the very really they have um, a strong um, leaning towards being open as individuals and they are extremely open to the associations and obviously to the things that make uh, that become manifest to them and their subjective landscape but the thing about INFPs being wholly subjective creatures is not entirely true as they do have an empirical bent to them, as in they're always vigilant in watching things. That's one thing that I notice about their extroverted intuition, that they are seeing what's happening out in the world and making the necessary associations by way of what they're seeing. They are, a, in some ways, because they know the uh, fundamental aspects, like the range and the variability of how um, being can make itself manifest. They know the uh, beautiful qualities of human, of people, and they know the horrific ones. They essentially know where heaven and hell exists in all aspects of, if they're not delusional per se, but they know where heaven and hell exists in all aspects of nature, society, um, and uh, other psyche and their own psyche. So they can smell a rat, or they can smell when somebody's being um, uh, disgenuine, particularly being disgenuine for and having ulterior motives. They are really the clinicians and the um, diagnosticians of uh, malevolent intentions and will by way of their uh, need for sort of empirical robustness they have to and it's very interesting because they will sit in their rooms and stuff but then there's a certain point in time where they have to go out and explore and it's just this interesting um dynamic between the uh primordial elements that make them up and their uh need for meaning and their complete openness to what is like, they are metaphysicians in some respects. I know I'm using all these uh, words to describe them, but they are complex. And that's why they're so creative, because they're such um, great differing degrees in the aspects of their um, cognition, uh, at least the ones in which in, in, that they value. And that's something you'll see that I bring up in all the uh, types, per se, but it's really interesting in the INF piece because uh, it leads to such um, great transformative aspects to them. And so far as this, that I've said in other videos that they create the self. And I think I've uh, addressed to the greatest extent what I mean by that. But why that's uh, salient in so far as the, the relation of extroverted intuition in their psyche and sort of the connection it has to introverted sensing is that INFPs, the reason that they can be people like Joan of Arc and the reason that they can be such transformative agents within um, uh, the um, uh, society at large or whatever community they're a part of is because they do have this distance between um, static meaning. And it's one thing I'm noticing in um, uh, introverted feeling is that um, introverted feeling is very much uh, meaning driven, but introverted sensing is in the same way. It's that introverted feeling seems to have a greater openness towards the way that meaning can make itself manifest by way of its communing with the uh, lower anthropomorphic structures much more general aspects of what it means to be human, per se, like introverted feeling knows primarily what it is to exist. 
it knows it to a very strong extent. Um, and it is not articulate or a procedural type. It's not an articulable or procedural type of knowledge like that which TI or TE comes up with, but it is very much one that is rooted and grounded in experience or grounded in being or existence. And that's why I'll switch between calling them phenomenologists or existentialists or saying they're being concerned with uh, metaphysics. What is? And um, introverted sensing, it is analogous in this manner, but what it tries to do insofar as what is relevant and salient to it, because it's impressionistic in its makeup, is try to find fixed patterns of meaning that it can always rely on. And it essentially tries to stultify and make something static, per se. Um, it's, totalit it's somewhat totalitarianistic in its nature, as it's trying to find fixed meaning patterns and fixed systems of meaning. So... An INFP, because they have this repressed uh, introverted sensing by way of their extroverted intuition, they are vigilant insofar as they're looking for nihilism to appear wherever. It's so interesting. They're looking for it to show up in certain, in certain ways. And kind of how they're doing this is that they know, um, not in a way that's um, conscious to them, but very, really unconscious, what are the relevant um, meaning structures that are at the heart of their society or their way of life or their mode of being? They have this very real uh, relationship with the Verdenkite that and the Midwelt and the uh, Weldenwelt. And those are Heidegger's words for saying the midlife of existence, the exterior life of existence, and the personal life of existence. They have this very real dynamic where they are plugged up between all three from by way of their um, introverted feeling being plugged in with the self, the um, introverted intuition, the extroverted intuition, um, polar introverted intuition, and, and, and uh, um, uh, no, excuse me, inferior extroverted thinking. I'll get to that. But the, the tertiary introverted sensing they're plugged into something um, that is bigger than themselves while being wholly concerned with themselves. Sort of the uh, cultural aspects that make them up. And they know when there's a shift in them. And they kind of know when um, that shift, per se, is why they can be uh, diagnosticians about the um, status excuse me, of culture and where it's going, it's so real to them that they see nihilism because they look at what it is that they value and is life-affirming and where that comes from in the culture at large. And then they extrapolate that onto other people in the culture because what INFPs essentially do, they say, if I feel this way, then there's a good chance because they are really, even though it's subjective, it's so strange, it is the general makeup of what is, per se, it's metaphysical in its aspects and its totality. It is what it means to be human, per se, in them. So they say, if I feel this way, then most likely other people are feeling this way. So Nietzsche, it's very interesting because he's an introverted feeler, a uh, tertiary introverted feeler, can, could do the same thing as an INTJ. Um, but INFPs really can spot out, like they can spot out their next, their primary their next greatest degree and variability of the uh, qualitative as aspects of their existence is to be vigilant. They watch. And man, I'm telling you, they see, we call it their moral vigilance or their bent towards uh, being very ethical individuals. But what they see is death. And death by way of the, what is too... Um, jostling and rapid of a transformation or an evolution and um, some uh, static system of meaning that exists in the midwelt, that exists in the midlife, or that exists in the culture, that exists, that is connected to me, but exists extended beyond me. And they get these impressions from their environment, and they are very aware of them. 
those those things don't um necessarily influence them per se they are uh, affected by them and they can very much know by way of their own uh, subjective experience and by the way that the meaning makes itself manifest to them when something occurs out in the world they know like they're like bloodhounds they're all in nihilism in a second they know that this is not gonna go well and it's going to lead to a great deal of death it doesn't have to be literal death per se but it can be like the death of something that they hold sacred or the death of some aspect that they see as life affirming or fundamentally human you cannot dehumanize an INFP and they will not stand for the dehumanization of reality it is um, so interesting and in why even when they are scattered in their speech and they because they have inferior extroverted thinking so they are not like super articulate in terms of rational speak at least they may have a hard time in being so um, they they are so intense they're so intense and vigilant because they can see it's very real to them and why even as they as uh, Christians or if they have paranormal experiences or um, uh, greater metaphysical experiences or imaginative impressions like they are imaginative imaginative beings because they are very open to their experience and their cognition and what the world is feeding to them as secondary perceiving types but the um, uh, real um, the intensity comes because they are qualitatively based and they are taking meaning first and deriving objects from it and it's hitting them it's so hitting them it's being um, awash through the a priori uh, ontological system that is their uh, way of uh, value structures insofar as that they're creators of themselves and their values there is a very real matrix or framework per se by way of a meaning filter or a um, uh, rich ultraviolet spectrum like an aurora borealis insofar as that they would be creatures of magnetism that the things pass through the spectrum and they have their dynamic and interaction with this spectrum and it releases some type of energy or some type of uh, wave in them a real manifestation that has a, an emotional impression to them that causes them to act because for them to feel is to act they may not act out into the out, act out in the world per se because they're perceiving types but it is much analogous to me for me and for me it is to think is to act I see thinking as an action for them feeling is very much an action because they are meaning first they're qualitative first before they are anything else and that object has no orientation or relation to them outside of their own meaning and that is why I say TI and FI are much like the uh, Judeo-Christian God insofar as that the, it is willful and it is by its own will uh, majesty and um, experience that it makes judgments or will make things manifest but things primarily manifest to them by way of their own being things emerge out of their being nothing gets apart or by way from their being that's why I say it's all in all It's because they so for example if you talk to an INFP and you say um, you say things they are so strongly listening to what you say first off do not ever because they are vigilant they're they are extremely vigilant because they are not just they're not they're looking for they're making um, sense out of what makes meaning 
they're not making sense out of what makes uh, rational sense. And you will very get a real uh, edict from an INFP that, you know, if you're thinking something that uh, ultimately disavows uh, yourself and is cancerous and brings death to you, it's probably wrong. And they will not probably can't, they may not be able to articulate why they think it's wrong, but they are viscerally struck with, stri stricken with what you're saying is wrong because of how it rubs against the core of the foundation of the meaning structures that exist in them. They're qualitative, and what I mean is they are listening to what you say, and if it strikes them in that manner, even if it's justified necessarily, because it's not to say that they're completely infallible, they're going to go there. And um, it's to say that the uh, qualitative aspect is the differentiator for them in a lot of ways and what people sort of have issue with them about, but I think is just a very fundamental aspect of what it means to be human. And I enjoy their existence and see them as wholly salient and necessary. And this is the role that I see that they can serve. Because I said before, they really know where hell and heaven and hell exist, per se. And that's sort of where their innate dichotomy of between what's morally right and what's evil emerges from. They know hell and heaven in nature. They know hell and heaven in personal experience. They know hell and heaven and whatever you can name it. Like how food could be bad, how it could be good. They have this cosmo... Uh, poetic, romantic lens to them and mythological vantage point to them in life that they make a narrative and a motif essentially out of everything because that the, that's really the innate way that people will communicate. There was narrative before there was rationality and they are really the oldest form of human, I think, insofar as cognition per se. I think INFPs and certain types existed before other types really did. Um, in the evolution of personality. But INFPs are an archetypal expression. They're like to the core of what it means to be human. And I very real, I very really mean this. And um, there's neurological and physiological reasons for that insofar as that our physiology, and I alluded to it before in talking about the eye, but we are not rational individuals. And I said this about the drives. The, we're not wholly homogenous things. There are very real aspects to us that are impersonal and not concerned with necessarily our conscious volition or our conscious will. And it directs us and creates impressions in us and is very really moving us. And it's where the school of psychoanalytical thought emerged from. You're not this homogenous thing. You're not a cute little singular self. You have a self. But it's not uh, one indivisible whole like people spontaneously believe from their own localized experience. And INFPs know this per se, and they're communing with all of this. And I'm sorry, the point I was making is that they know heaven and hell exist at every level. And they have a very much like meerkat sense. And like, you know how meerkats, they, well maybe you don't, meerkats... They have these communities and they have these homes and things, but they're always on the lookout for predators. <laughs> like, they're always on the lookout. They're so vigilant. INFPs, they know heaven and hell. They have this mythopoetic lens. They know what's morally right and what's morally wrong, and they're on the lookout for it. They're concerned with it because you want to find meaning in life, follow an INFP around or follow an ENFP around. They're, it's not, they're not too far from behind it, and so far as that is what they're after. They're straight gunning for that, and everything else comes secondarily and bows down to it. That's why um, the, their experience is qualitative over being objective, and I don't mean that pejoratively. Um, and their role in society is this, that for very really, because INFPs uh, repress extroverted intuition, extroverted thinking, and they um, have a uh, tertiary relationship with their introverted sensing, they do not. They can have a flippancy, uh, and they obviously their introverted feeling um, does not like to be influenced by the outside world. They can have a flippancy with facts, 
and they can be skeptical of the uh, fixed patterns of meaning that society presents to them. And they're wholly aware of them. Um, they're not completely conscious of their introverted sensing, but they're very real of what it's telling them. And it's telling them things in relation to meaning. And so far as the meaning structures that make up society, they know how those things are existing, but they know sort of on the higher law that they uh, are deriving things from or the higher moral order that they're pulling things from by the way of the base anthropomorphic structures of introverted feeling they know very really if that thing is in a certain place and it's something that's so interesting about them is that they're phenomenological insofar as that they take things as uh like, if they're angry, they're in a place. If they're happy, they're in a place. If they're sad, they're in a place. If they're whatever, they're in a place. They're in a state of being, per se. It's like their states of being have variabilities in terms of energy generation. They can very much, their complex of self emerges and is directed and pulled in various directions by way of the places that they're in. And they can very much sort of track, like little meerkats, um, where things are going or what ideological motifs exist or what ideas exist in a society and how close those things are approximately to heaven and hell. And why that they can look, per se, at um, something, listen to what somebody's saying, read what's going on or hear what's going on or whatever, and then start to make some sort of grand campaign to revivify and transform culture in some way, in some aspect. And they are the uh, dying savior in a lot of ways. NFs are that in a lot of ways, but they are, INFPs are that in a very real way, insofar as that they have the ability to say, uh, what is that which leads to life and what is that which leads to death? in a very uh, rough sense. And they say, what is that thing in the environment and what impression is it giving me? If it's giving me this impression, then what is that doing to mankind? And if that's doing that to mankind, what is it, where is it going to take mankind? And so far as it's being. Not maybe in its objective sense, but what does it mean to be and what does it mean to exist? They are so concerned with that, it's not even funny. And it's why you should be, um, one should be sort of conscious on how they're talking to them about things because their concern with, uh, something that is fundamental and foundational and, um, something that's just not easily articulable. It's just not easy to talk about, and it takes a great deal. It takes thousands of years, typically, for people, such as in religious system, to articulate all of the um, aspects of consciousness and being that they're actively processing. Like, I have no idea what it is like to go out into the world as a being that is qualitatively based, insofar as that... I receive meaning first before receiving an object, at least in my, because I'm so rationally bent, I see objects first, and I don't really denote meaning to them or imbue meaning to them, that's why, for, and then I do it secondarily by way of, my emotions and my th thinking don't speak to one another, but to move myself out of the picture is to say that um, INFPs are amazingly fantastical creatures insofar as that they have a very real uh, mode of being to them that is wholly unique. Um, it's not so unique. It's wholly unique insofar as this, that it is deeply what it means to be human. It's like all too human in a lot of ways. Now, um, to say this, that what they are motivated to be is to be an ethical agent, is to be a moral agent. They are concerned mostly what, with what actions and what thoughts bring life or death. And that's 
just what they are so after. And it's not in a literal sense, but a, a phenomenological one. That is why they are always uh, beings of spiritual spirituality and why their um, heritage and their um, uh, emotions and um, the emergent properties and stratum of life have so much uh, salience to them. And it's where their art comes from because they are the creators of mythology. They are the creators of symbols. They are the creators of uh, religion. They have to um, very really be um, at an interface with the world in a way such that they guide the creation and the expression of the self for all of eternity. And they will be the arbiters and guardians of what it means to be human and what it means to exist on in the qualitative and phenomenological aspects of what it means to be. And in that way, that is the INFP and my analysis of them. Thank you for watching this video.